people without uh, competent and qualified persons even the electricity would be a terribly dangerous uh, element for our companies so now it is quite linking with rigging and lifting also like rigging and lifting nearby energized equipment or energized uh, overhead power lines or underground uh, lines it would be like uh, a very sensitive activity that is why sometimes for rigging and lifting we are using rigger level 1 rigger level 2 rigger level 3 uh, if 40 tons are above or any sensitive lifting is there we use rigger level 1 also so make sure you know they can prepare critical lift plan they can approve it properly and ensuring safety as well and also it depends on the number of voltage you know if it is like 0 to 300 voltage then minimum 3 feet distance we need to maintain while rigging and lifting but if it is like uh, uh, 300 to 50000 volts then minimum 10 feet 50000 to 250000 volts that means uh, it should be doubled like 20 feet and above than that 250000 volts to onward we have to use 25 feet minimum distance from energized power lines for any sensitive lifting or rigging you know so these are some of the rules uh, set uh, from osha even from saudi aramco side but now we can discuss in detail you know what things matters a lot uh, while you are performing rigging and lifting now this rigging and lifting uh, since the activity itself looks uh, uh, very much uh, you know critical in that context a smallest mistake might be like if you ignore center of gravity one factor or you ignore the wind speed or you ignore the competence level of your crane operator or the signal man is giving god forbid the wrong signal the things could be out of control in seconds unfortunately that is why it's a team work as well it's not like only the gentleman as a rigger have to be fully competent as a rigger and lifter even the crane operator the signal man the the riggers all have to be qualified you know so uh, what is important uh, to understand as per the regulations what are the key responsibilities of uh, you know the personnel involved in rigging and lifting first of all their safety their responsibility they have to stay safe and remain alert in sites and facilities that means no sleeping disorder no laziness all the time they have to be atten- attentive no distracted mind no addiction with the mobile screens i mean any factor which is distracting them from their distracting their focus you know at site must be avoided and then make sure they are uh, quite uh, confident to understand and abide to company safety policies make sure in the toolbox meeting then your safety meetings uh, even in writing everybody knows that safety is all starts from them is starts from you so your safety your responsibility now abide to wearing uh, the, the warning signs pasted in sites and uh, facilities they will definitely follow whatever the warning signs are there use the appropriate proper pp's personal protective equipment as instructed and also uh, they report all the hazards so hazard identification anybody that is why in saudi aramco particular we have a, a work a stop work authority that means you all are empowered if anything is going unsafe or you believe any unsafe fact is going uh, happening or any unsafe condition is there you are fully empowered to stop and uh, you know guide to the concerned supervisor inform him that there is a, a potential danger here report all hazards that's your responsibility report and document all defects immediately any defect in any lifting gears or including crane or whatever we are using for rigging and lifting all lifting gears and equipment make sure you report them immediately never throw items from height it's quite logical never throw items from height only competent people are allowed to operate equipment and machines even like let's take an example if you have a rigger level 1 and you are lifting 40 tons or above load and his id is expired just yesterday so are you going to allow him to still continue lifting of course you will not allow him because uh, same way for the crane operator if his id is expired or not valid or sometime the fake id could also be there 
god forbid so in that scenario you you are responsible to stop them and don't let them complete uh, that activity you know. if you'll compromise with safety regulations of course uh, it will fire back to your company's reputation especially in aramco database because in aramco they have lpd loss prevention division they have epd environmental protection they have pmt project management team and several other divisions are there so especially the lpd their job is to prevent from losses to aramco so they'll be rounding and you know verifying if any serious uh, violations are there of course they can make you blacklist also this is how aramco uh, is uh, trying to save their goodwill and serving humanity by not killing people by the way by saving and making sure no one is injured getting injured or dying at their site you know because it kills their reputation and i hope this one makka incident this tower crane and uh, the relevant company they are crying for business even if they have business the saudi government is watching them very closely and not giving them any flexibility or freedom you know so that means one accident or incident terribly can damage your business goodwill your uh, even uh, you know the reputation gone means no more business nobody would allow you to go for bidding as well so that is why this is our business continuity requirement as well it's our need to follow safety regulation and uh, second thing we can get everything back but what about the human lives you know the 29 cfr occupational safety and health regulations osha standards these are some of the regulations they also refer and guide us you know like 1910.17 this is all about overhead and you know gantry cranes same way the there are rigging equipment and material handling 1926.251 then we also have if you go to osha website you can search any sort of standard you know, and see what that particular code is talking about even though it's american labor institute or labor department but still their standards are uh, very much uh, followed and accepted especially in saudi arabia because mostly the american companies and brands are uh, working and having some strong alliance that is why we are more uh, incorporating american standards into our sops and procedures so in that context no harm to learn more about osha standards now the safe systems of work permit to work uh, it's mandatory is there for rigging and lifting process or even for electrical work or any sort of activities are going on in restricted areas or confined spaces or within the red zone make sure the ptw system is well followed like permit to work system it's a formal written authority to operate a planned procedure which is designed to prevent. like in aramco we have wpr from the contractor side so the aramco approved first they have to pass with 80% marks Uh, from the third party institute three books they will teach them for four days 80% mark first exam they have to pass third party examination is done certification is achieved then you apply your company you know get exam schedule for those guys from aramco and aramco exam they have to pass with 90 or above percent marks and then aramco will allow you to work as a work permit receiver so this work permit receiver aramco approved as mandatory especially if the project is belong to the restricted areas or any you know danger zone well identified by aramco then within that area you can't work without an authorized work permit receiver as well as the permit have to be taken proactively you know. even for every activity somehow you need permissions from aramco for sure now there is a validity of a ptw permit to work like last for one working shift so that means the first permit will be issued for one shift extendable to the second shift means maximum 24 hours even up to 30 days is also acceptable but you need to justify and proactively have some hazard analysis and several studies to show you need this permit for one month because your product is longer you know otherwise for one shift then they can increase for another shifts maximum for 24 hours then up to the 30 days but for 30 days you need to justify that uh, your project truly required 30 days to complete 
No, receiver of uh, PTW, as I mentioned, company employee certified by department had to sign a receiver permit, but in Aramco, Aramco is the one to approving them. Sponsoring organization has contracted cancellation supervision of PTW is, is a job safety does not meet the conditions specified on the work permit, emergency situation. So even the permits can be canceled, even can be suspended, you know, if the quality of work is not there. Yes, there must be a safe systems of work like toolbox talks. And in the toolbox talks, it's kind of a safety lecture. You educate your workers and you guide them for safe work conditions. And also the toolbox meeting or delegate meeting is important day-to-day -day activity. We all are performing, you, you know, before starting any project or even before starting a day, we all get together and discuss the hazards or the controls or or some several things. I mean, every day the agenda could be as per the nature of the project. It requires to be carried out for all work with significant safety exposure, final check in the hazard assessment process and the start of the work implementation. So hazard identification is not everything, but that is the most important one. Once you have to diagnose all the hazards and then the major part is to control, to put some precautions and have some effective control to minimize or some of the hazards you can try to eliminate also before even you start your job. So when does it take place? When do you do toolbox talk? Must take place at the job site with all workers before starting the work. Before starting the work, must take place at job site when major changes or different phases of work is started. So any major change, make sure you have a separate toolbox talk. And, every, and there must be MOC, the management of change procedure reflecting uh, and controlling all such changes and responding safely, you know. Now, safe systems of work toolbox talk. What are being discussed, covered? There must be a work plan, hazards and controls, roles and responsibilities, emergency procedure must be there, PPs, and of course, the lesson we learned from the previous incidents or accidents, if any, God forbid, question and resolutions of issues raised by the workers. So. You have to be the good listener to listen to your workers, you know, might be they would be facing some challenges. So make sure you listen them and accordingly respond them to support and making sure they are safe at the job site. Ultimately, they are the effective, effectives, you know, because they are the one working all the time uh, at the job site. The rest is all official jobs. So the workers who are going to be affected, God forbid in case of any, incident or accident, those guys need a lot of training. What are being discussed covered? Work plan, hazards, but just remember those words. Now, what is the importance of good housekeeping? Housekeeping for any management uh, system standards is mandatory. It's, it's, it's helping, supporting to every sort of management system, either it's quality management system, or we have a food safety management system, we have occupational health and safety management system, we have environmental management system, we have whatever management, waste management system is there. So housekeeping will definitely be supporting and helping your management best practices, you know, to making sure nothing will go wrong. And once the housekeeping is well insured, even the fire incident, the probability will go down, even for the fire incidents. So housekeeping must be carried out before, during, and after rigging and lifting activities. So for every process, make sure before, during, and after rigging and lifting activity, the housekeeping is there. Good housekeeping means you have to ensure that all the items are securely stored to avoid hazardous situations or fire hazards. Ensure equipment and accessories are well kept and maintained with time. Reduce injuries like slipping and tripping due to oily or wet floors. It's all covered. It's not like only removing dust. Housekeeping means even all hidden areas, even certain uh, certain order standardization, all comes under housekeeping best practices. So just an example, just an example. Poor housekeeping and work procedures due to inadequate site and work area supervision. You know, one picture is more louder than maybe 1,000 words, actually. So there is a methodology, we call it 5S uh, program, uh, before and after concept. So you just take pictures of your bad practice 
and you change them, make them the role model, and then take another picture. So before, after, and this is how you ensure the continual improvement, even to your management. This is how you are improving all areas. Like in the second picture, see equipments and materials are organized and stored. So this is before and this is the after. Good housekeeping in show, safe workplace. Now lifting equipment comprises of what? Lifting appliances equipment, performing the lifting, lifting accessory devices, which connect to the load and lifting appliances. So that means some lifting gears are there and we attach with the hooks and cranes and we lift, start lifting. But of course, plenty of uh, challenges would be there like achieving center of gravity, making sure the load is not going to be disbalanced. The employees are fully trained. Nothing will go wrong. The capacity is well calculated for the crane, even the load capacity, everything is well calculated. Lifting gears are also selected and uh, filtered out according to the required uh, project, according to the weight we are going to lift. So it's, the selection is pretty important, you know, uh, including crane, including understanding the load, shape, everything, because every time the shape is not same, you know, sometimes different shapes of the material is there and weight is sometimes less, sometimes more. So every, a lot of variables are there. So accordingly, your lifting plan should be authentic and effective, you know. And sometimes we have excellent plan, but execution was uh, somehow not done according to the plan. So the probability gone up. That is why several incidents are happening. And it's a terrible loss, especially in offshore industry, rigging and lifting or hoisting is one of the difficult tasks, I believe, because already in the water, uh, balance is uh, hard to maintain it. So what are the lifting accessories? So we would have wire ropes, shackles, webbing slings, containers, also the chain blocks, lever hoist, or even hook, eye boards and snatch blocks. These are some of the examples. Components of uh, lifting equipment, the size selection according to the required, uh, according to the weight you're going to lift, make sure you select it accurately as per your need. And there shouldn't be any damage. If any damage is there, means you are not going to use, like wire in one stranded and stranded core. These are the components of uh, lifting equipment. The components of lifting equipment, SWL, one of the most important factor, safe working load. Serial number, date manufacture and color code. There are different color codes. Of course, we have to follow as per, as per the manufacturing guidelines as well. Why rope, safe working load, specified breaking strength and safety factor. Two important things need to be considered. Look at the wet socket, timber with ferrule and even the press sleeve, closed socket some of the lifting gears. How are we gonna catch up the defects? Even if you see with full focus, you will see some damage, are quite obvious. The defects of wire rope sling, uh, kinking is caused by the loops that have been drawn too tightly as a result of improper handling. Kinks are permanent and will require that the rope or the damage section be taken out of service. Even the bird caging is caused by the rope being twisted or by a sudden release of an overload, the rope or the affected suction must be replaced. That is why sometimes we have third party inspections, sometimes the internal critical inspections from our own employees. Uh, just one minute, please. Okay, 
Okay, so few of the more defects, just an example. The Korean or the croated, they must also be replaced. Same way, if you see such kind of damage, again, we can't use. Broken wires are not acceptable because sometimes we lift heavy loads over small sheaves and these breaks being caused by the standard nicking resulting from the heavy load shield. Even the wire rope good storage system must be there for easy traceability, for selection, for even to keeping them qualitative. That's why we need a care and maintenance system for the wire ropes. And clearly we need to understand the purpose of lubrication. Because uh, it's not like only the factory or the manufacturing facility, like they lubricated one time and then it's lost uh, forever. No, no, no. You have to make sure a good lubricant practice you understand. So then your resistance can be maintained and also water repellent and the penetrating ability would also be good enough as per the design specs and temperature stability also will be maintained accordingly. If you have a good lubricant, practice takes well followed. And there must be a frequency of that lubrication I recommended at least quarterly, depending on the usage and also the work environment. So without care and maintenance, even the shelf life or the expiry date of your lifting gears would also be in trouble. Like you invested for five years for all the lifting gears, but within one year because of poor safety management system within one year you it's all damaged because of corrosion and all that then and uh, another cost you know the shareholders the business community of course uh, the owner of the company he would not be happy at all because of uh, not giving care and he is reinvesting again you know the wire of pre-use check sws is ad adequate for the load need to be checked Color coding is important, but where applicable, make sure you have plate number and ID mark, each individual leg along with the entire length. These are the important areas where Croyan abrasions or mechanical damage broken wires shouldn't be there. Barrel should be free from cracks or other deformities because uh, it will be giving strength to that particular joint. Examine master link assembly where Croyan cracking. Now, what type of shackles do we have? Screw pin anchor shackle. We also have round pin anchor shackle. We have safety type anchor shackle as well. Screw pin chain shackle and also round pin chain shackle and safety type chain shackle. So, different models, different quality made in Germany, made in America, made in China, made in Korea. Choice is yours. Parts of shackle, we call it uh, kind of this part. We, the name is crown, and then we have a pin and the jaw. The three important parts. What kind of defects could be there? The pictures are more louder than words. You can see the wrong pin. The overload. Jaw opening. But bear in mind, if it is opening more than 10 degree or 15 degree, we will not use them. We have to replace. Gauging cut marks. So what are the pre-use checks, you know? Check for wear. Check for wear and straightener. Even the pin always seated up properly and check that shackle is not opening up. Unsafe practices, it shouldn't be like this. Good storage system must be there, especially for easy traceability and selection. <clears throat> this webbing slings, the uh, types of webbing sling, you can see the flat and the round. We have flat webbing slings, we have round webbing slings. But in Ramco, mostly they're profiting this chain. 
metal chain fling you. So, uh, if you can remember, just bear in mind there is some colors like green, yellow, gray, red, orange. And accordingly, you can see what is the vertical straight lift, like 2000 kg. And if it's a choker hitch, 1600. If it is a basket, 4000 kg. If it is basket 45, it's then 3400 kg and basket 90 feet. That means uh, 2800 kg. So accordingly, according to the weight you will be going through, which type of uh, lifting gear you are using, including choker, basket or basket, a different angle gear. If you take an example of orange, the vertical straight lift is 10,000 kg, but if you, if you are using choker hitch, then make sure you only use 8,000 kg not 10,000. If you're using basket, then 20,000, but still uh, uh, need a lot of analysis, you know, uh, we call it kind of a critical lift analysis and the nature of that lift also. So you make it double actually, when you are using basket, so make sure the capacity is double than the weight. Same way, we saw as per the standard and even such uh, things should be part of your SOP as well, like rigging and lifting procedure. Such webbing slings are not acceptable at all, like acid damage, heat damage, cuts, cuts and tensor damage. Such damages are quite obvious, so make sure you remove them from the site. There must be a proper checklist for the webbing slings. The save working load is adequate for the load. Color coding, if applicable, plate number, same thing we discussed, but make sure no chemical damage. Even the foreign bodies into the fiber, distortion of wear in the metal eyes as well. Look at the story system, the good story system. Proper traceability tag should be on the front side. So anytime you can inspect, you can select also. And any damage is there, of course, you can remove and put the new one for sure. These are the type of containers sometimes we are using for lifting. Size is important, the company name, marking means the complete marking. So all our, you know, company name, size, date of inspection, nest inspection, at least such tag must be there. It would be giving an idea, what is the name of which area? Make sure which things you need to check, like the check link, check leg for this, check destination marking, Check certification, check door locking, check for pockets and, you know. So, free slugs, dedicated slings and shackles, do not remove. We use uh, chain block functions. Chain block is main for lifting, but uh, safety lashes or even the must be fitted on the hook. Designed for one person to pull, do not overload, no suspended load actually. And this is kind of a level hoist functions. We use it as a lifting device, operated with a handle instead of hand chain. Not available in very high capacities not more than few tons. Short load chain used for short lifts, commonly abused, attempt to get more leverage by extending the handle with a piece of pipe. So sometimes we, we are not happy with the size of the handle and so we add another piece of pipe. So level hoist, that means the main for pulling, 
can also be used for lifting, but less capacity. Do not overload by using an extension rope or pipe. Sorry. There must be again pre use check for the chain block, safe working load, color coding, safety lashes, even the no sign of misuse, scratch hook, corroded casing, or scratch distorted chain. General checks, you know, it's quite uh, easy. Every company has separate checklist for all their lifting gears internally, even through third party inspection companies. Such chain blocks, the defects of chain are not acceptable. Like this is kind of a welded chain. Those cut cracks are there, not in chain, not acceptable, and corroded as well. These are the different types of hooks. That was eye hook, swivel, and grab hook. But this safety pin is important. The angle is important. It shouldn't go down more than 10 to 15. If it is more than that, just uh, remove it. We don't use it actually. See the hooks, the parts of hooks, the strut, eye, body, as well as setting. These are the defects I'm talking about. The safety pin is not there, and also throat opening, twisting of hook body. But if it is twisting like more than 10 degree or 15, again, we can't use it at all. There are pre use checks. Check for the wear and deformation. Check for signs of opening up. Check for wear and cracks. Check for cracks and twisting. And, and I told you know, every company has separate inspection checklist for all their lifting gears. So, I boards, types of I boards. We have dynamo, we have collar, collar with the link. This is the correct way to use, and this is incorrect. No chances to break. If shorter SI and ring bolts are pulled and an angle as shown, they will either bend or break. Just vertical loads. They are designed for vertical loads only. So correct use of eye boards. See? And your rigger, your rigger level one, two, three, they must be fully familiar how to use these type of uh, lifting gears or the eye boards or slings or web slings, whatever. Eye body and thread for the eye board. These are the names. Snatch block. There are the different types of snatch blocks. Again, made in Germany, made in different choices. Again, some companies they they're uh, you know like if you are working with a Ramco, they will uh, set their standards for everything, and you can't violate actually because anytime they can audit and check if any violations are there, which is not acceptable to them. But if you are working with any other and they don't have a strong, then might be made in Korea, China, anything you are trying to use, but risking, risking the life of your workforce for sure. Snatch block, pre use checks, examine head fitting shackles eye. Color coding is current, SWL is well mentioned, and all other things are also examined. So for everything, inspection is important. That means side plate steering bolt cannot be fully withdrawn. Manufacture certificate and certificate of application. Maintenance inspection shall be according to manufacturer's recommendation. 
Ensure split pins, locking and secure pins are in place. Ensure support structure of the record. So again, rather than studying all these lengthy points, better to uh, go back and check the uh, inspection list of all your uh, rigging and lifting equipments or tools or the lifting gears, in other words, and then see either these checklists are okay or still need to be updated as per the international standards or as per Aramco standards. The rigging principles are quite clear. Some of the terminologies which we can't ignore, by the way. What we can't ignore, the working load limit, WLL. It's all started capacity of the lifting equipment. Safe working load. That's also important. The load the equipment can safely lift. Breaking strength, the actual force required to pull rigging gear to destruction. Proof loading, that means proof loaded by a certified body acceptable by the relevant authority. Safety factors to calculate the uh, working load limit and safe working load of different types of lifting equipment. Tear weight, that means the weight of empty container and there is maximum gross weight means total weight is equal to PW plus SW, L. Total weight plus safe working load. If you plus both, so we, you will get maximum gross weight. Including angle, angle created between the slings like. The lesser the angle is, the more the stress on the slings. The lesser the angle is, lesser the weight should be. Otherwise, more danger. Now, the safest angle could be 60, could be 90. But bear in mind the sling angle 60 degree is our attachment point A is equal to sling length. 90 degree angle point A, but two plus height of triangle. And 120 attachment point means one and a half plus sling length. So, and based on the angle, you will justify your center of gravity as well. Because if the angle of the sling is not good or not well achieved, or the load is not divided equally, or the slings are not selected as per the weight of the load, then things could be out of control anytime. Same way the crane capacity as well. See how the angles and the tension in slings. If you are using 30 degree angle, 520 and 520 all the way, 60 means 600 and 600 kg, 90 means 800 to 800 kg, and 120 angle means 110 to 110. That means 110 load is divided in with angles actually. How you can make it fully uh, balanced through the center of gravity and dividing load on both slings equally. So these are the weight of, weight of the load, like maximum load is equal to WLL multiply angle factor, multiply uh, re vector unit. So re vector factor. So eight multiply. Now the maximum load is eight multiply one by the, the WLL. We have a chart separately available, you know, angle wise. And we get that factor from there and re factor also, and we multiply them and get the load like 6.9 tons we can lift with that you know uh, angle 60 degree so this is how we calculate the weight of the load and sling swl is 8 tons by the way so 8 multiply 1.73 the factor then multiply 0 0.5 means the re factor you multiply all three and you get 6.92 tons so 6.9 tons can be uh lift up you know this is how you calculate the weight of the load but again let me mention your rigor level one two three should be trained for all these formulas how to calculate the load how to calculate the crane capacity even somewhat there are charts available everything is predefined and mentioned by the manufacturer even but still they must be familiar how to calculate how to use these formulas same way the weight of the load uh, WLL is equal to weight multi, uh, divided by angle factor divided by re factor. So we'll get 4.6 tons. 
that means weight is 4 tons angle is 60 refactor is 1.73 and refactor 0.5 actually so factor and refactor must be an angle because these factors would be as per the angle and of course as per the weight you are deciding which angle would be usable more effectively No, this is kind of a sling angle factor. How we multiply, you know, the 90 degree means the sling angle factor is L divided by H, 1, 1.155 angle wise. 90 degree have 1 point and uh, 1.000, in other words, 60 degree 1.155, 45 degree 1.415. And how we calculated L divided by H, we will get sling, uh, sling angle factor. So automatically we can, uh, according to the angle, this is predefined, so we can uh, uh, select the slings accordingly. According to the weight also we are lifting. And the center of gravity is the most important one. If you don't divide the load equally, then the center of gravity would be disturbed and more chances of collapse got to be. Same way if the load is 5 tons, so you calculate the load with 1.2 multiplied 2.5 tons is equal to 3 tons. 1.4 because length over height already we studied, you know, we need to divide L divided by H and we'll get the factor which need to be multiplied with the load actually. And then you get the exact load how much you can lift. What is the center of balance? Now the communication roles of banksman. If you're using the banksman, make sure he knows how to properly rake up the load and supervision of the rigging crew. Ensure that the rigging material and equipment have the necessary capacity and in safe condition. Ensuring correct assembly of rigging material or equipment, safety of the rigging crew and other person correct signaling during the lifting operation. That's all important as a banksman to be fully responsible for all these things. Who are qualified to be the banksman? Supervisor, foreman, team leaders, and bosses. So these are the guys we can use them. Use them as a banksman. And signals are critically important, especially to guide to the crane operator. The load up, just you keep your one finger up and you round it, revolve it, and that means load up. Lower the down, load up slowly, load down slowly. If your hand is upside, that means load up slowly. If the hand is on the downside, and fingers are upside, that means load down slowly and you are revolving your finger as well. Boom up, boom down, boom up slowly, boom down slowly. So it would require time to time, whenever you get chance, just go, even go to my YouTube channel training zone, you will get plenty of knowledge there. You know, if you have a dream to be Nibo IGC certified, all lectures are there free of cost. Just go to my channel and start learning. Even you will get plenty of other videos also. So learning is a continual journey, you know. But I'm sure uh, today you spent uh, four, five, six hours. So you would have some ideas. But that is the starting point. Now it is up to you to make it daily habit. And day by day, get maximum knowledge and keep your knowledge at optimum level. It is required actually for your safety and the safety of your company's assets. Now boom up, load down, boom down, load up, everything slowly, use white lines, use main line, travel forward, turn right, turn left. So these are some of the signals. Even, you know, shorten the hydraulic boom, extend the hydraulic boom. You can't remember within today everything, but Whenever you get time, just uh, start learning what are the hand signals. 
how to stop, how to swing load, how to close arm, you know, open clamp or close clamp, and also the dog, everything. No response should be made to unclear signals. If the signal is not clear, there shouldn't be any response from the crane operator side. We can use two-way radio walkie-talkie. So there are advantages and disadvantages, of course, but it's required for communication. So provide accuracy of the crane movement, confident to carry out the operation, commonly used for lifting, air high, blind spot, and night activities. It is disadvantages, of course, are there. Communication break due to uh, uh, breakdown due to the garbled message and also the weak battery wave interference and also interruption background noise. So guys, this is uh, all about rigging, hoisting and lifting. But uh, to be very honest, when we go for rigger level one, it's a five days training. So uh, three days practical and two days we do practical actually. We uh, rent out a crane, we have all the lifting accessories, and we show you practically all these things, you know. But since it's online and it's kind of an awareness session, so I'm sure it's a good start. Now it is up to you how deeper you want to learn, you know. It's a continual journey. And I think uh, it's more than enough. Uh, still, I believe you became kind of an overdose maybe because four different topics in one day, even for tougher for me, you know, but somehow we managed. So uh, I would appreciate if you can mention your name and ID numbers in the chat box. If it is already shared with our certification department, it's all okay. Otherwise you can type your name and uh, ID and your cell number. So I'll share with our yes. certification department. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, already shared. With the already shared, then it's okay, no need. Thank you okay, very much. Thank you very much. Somehow we manage it. Uh, trust me, it's, it's not like uh, four topics in one day. <laughs> so it's a uh, yeah, yeah. Like each topic and look at my speed also. <laughs> I tried just somehow to manage it. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. have an effective training. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank very you. much, guys. So nice of you. Thank for your great patience and bearing with me for six hours thank you very much for this wonderful time okay thank you very much take care of yourself thank you thank you bye 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 mm -hmm.